Somebody sets a price. Somebody delivers a price. We're hopefully monitoring to see what happened. Did we deliver the price right? Did we win the business? And hopefully that becomes a cycle and we go back and revisit that pricing from the beginning. So I think of this as the execution piece. And, and in my view, this is where Model N lives. Model N lives in execution. But let's talk about what I really mean when I say execution. Because this is how we helped justify the system within Maxim. And I actually used this slide, by the way, with uh, the CEO. Here you, here you have 25 DVDs for $9.99. Just below it, though, if you really want, you can buy 50 for $31.99. This is an execution problem. Alternatively, of course, we could get this beautiful new HD TV DVD combo. It's only $449. But if you want, you can get one that's already out of the box for $475. <laughs> this is an execution problem. So when I think of execution, the first thing that comes to my mind is, let's stop making mistakes. We make so many mistakes. If we just stop the mistakes, we're going to do wonders in our pricing. But I think of execution another way as well. And that is, here we've got in the upper left a dashboard of an old car. And it's got the steering wheel and the speedometer. And you can see what's happening. And isn't that wonderful? But when you look at the lower right, you get a lot more things. You're able to do more. So the guy driving the car in the lower right might have his GPS and he doesn't get lost. He might have his cruise control. So he has more capability. As we get better at execution, it gives us the ability to do more things. So we enable new capabilities with execution. So what you're about to see now is the list of things that we presented that say, here are how we can stop making mistakes, and here are how we can add new capabilities if we go with a new pricing system. Now, we, we made the big promise to the company that we're going to deliver $100 million in extra profit per year doing this. And, and I think we're going to do it. I don't think that's a big deal. Uh, Jeff Bond promised me. So, <laughs> so we're going to go through the list here, eliminate mistakes and new capabilities. And let's start with just eliminating the mistakes. What if we could stop undercutting ourselves? In this business, we know that our customers come in for multiple different quotes. They come in and they ask for a direct quote. They come in and they ask for quotes from Avenet and Arrow and Future. And they come in and ask for quotes from Flex and Wistron. And, and wouldn't it be great if every time they came in and asked for a quote, we put the same price on it? I can tell you that Maxim doesn't do a good job at that today. But we're going to in the near future. So, so this is a big deal. We're also implementing something we call socket-based pricing. And socket-based pricing is this concept that says, once we've priced a socket, that's the price for the socket. If someone wants to come in and pretend that they're going to buy more, sorry, we've already priced the socket. So we're pushing that as best we can at this point in time. Next one, honoring design registrations. We all do design registrations with our distributors. And the reason we do this is we want to reward our distributors for the effort that they put in to design our products in, into our customers' boards. And yet, if we don't know that that registration happened and we undercut our own distributor with quotes, what we're doing is taking the incentive away from our distributor to sell our products. And instead, they're going to sell our competitors' products. And so if we can honor those registrations better, we will end up making our distributors happy and hopefully get more products built in. So this is a big deal, being able to honor design registrations. I love this one. Who, by the way, who in the room does MFN? MFN is most favored nation clause. You might have two or three customers that you have MFN clauses with. I love what we're about to do with this. So here's the problem with MFN. You've got an MFN with one customer. And another customer comes in, and you really want to win the business, and you're going to price below that MFN price, but you don't know it. Nobody told you that you're about to do it. So you're about to make a mistake. And now, not only did you price really low, but you owe the other customer money for the buyback on the MFN. 
what we're about to do to clean up MFN is put a floor so that you can never quote below that MFN price. And what it really does is it turns that MFN contract to your advantage. The reason for this is you now have tons of incentive to never price below MFN. The entire company has tons of incentive to never price below MFN. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, the US government has an MFN clause. And they have an MFN clause for commercials. During election cycles, commercials are the most expensive time ever. Because if they ever lower the price of a commercial to some customer, they have to lower it to all the people that are running for elections. So they never lower the price of commercials during election season. That's the exact same concept of what we're talking about here, is that once you set this floor of an MFN price, you've now got this great floor, and that helps you as a company as well as um, lives, helps you live up to the commitments that you've made. Upsell. This is a really cool chart. This is some of our distributors and, and some margins that they were getting. This is the DISTI margins that they were getting. Notice anything really interesting on that one on the far right? They're cheating us. Well, not really. They're just charging more than what we told them they should charge from a resale price. Is that bad or is that good? So what the current plan is, is to be able to know this and be able to share in the upside with the distributor. Because what the distributor is doing here is telling us what our customers are really willing to pay for our parts where if we tell them all they can ever do is sell at our resale, we never see what our customers are really willing to pay for the parts. So why not let them upsell and just share in the profits? Oh, I did want to point out one last thing. We have four, four real areas where we're getting our return on this. So certainly we're going to get direct profits, and we already decided that it was going to be $100 million or more. We're certainly going to be able to lower costs just by stopping mistakes. We don't have to clean up mistakes. We'll be more efficient. We'll do more auto quoting. Distributor relations will be much better, especially if we're honoring our DISTI registrations better. And then most importantly, in my mind, we'll have data. And data makes a huge difference in what we can do. One percent increase in price can produce 10 percent improvement in profit. So all we need to do is get one percent increase in price. Think about this for just a second. This is a chart of, um, of a company that I've worked with in the past. None that I've mentioned their names up here, by the way. This is a chart from a company that I've worked with in the past, where this is the discount percentages that you see them giving on a deal-by-deal -deal basis. So the one at five percent, guess what that is? That's the level at which salespeople are allowed to discount to. The ones at 10%, the level the area manager can discount to. 15%, you get the idea. Why is it always at 5, 10, and 15%? Why not 4 or 3? And so if every deal we do, we get 1%, we get to add that 10% to the bottom line. So let me say, we, we have misallocated our pricing resources. Our pricing resources spend a lot of time doing day-to-day -day quotes, where what we ought to be doing is day-to-day -day quote analytics. We ought to be figuring out what the price level should be and where we want to be price-wise. So the thought here is that we will free up their time so that they can do things that are going to add more value than simply quoting. Uh, there will be a significant um, decrease in the number of people doing day-to-day -day quotes.